You're the only, as I understand it, Democrat from outside of Chicago in the Illinois delegation. Is that a coincidence, or are Democrats having a tough time appealing to districts such as yours, rural districts across the country? Well, Democrats have had a hard time. I think that's going to change in November of 2018, here just 41 days away. Uh, you know, the, the problem was over an eight year period, Democrats lost about a thousand seats when you look at governor's mansions, state legislatures, and Congress. Part of that was due to the, the fact that Democrats were writing off much of rural America, or they would see a small town or a less populated county and say, you know, that's a Republican area, we're just not going to show up. What we're doing this cycle, and, and you know, to, the, to your earlier point, how did I win by 20 points in a district that Donald Trump won? Um, I, I hope people back home in downstate Illinois will say, well, she shows up. It doesn't matter that my town has 300 people. She comes and she uses the, her two ears and her one mouth proportionately and listens and then goes back out to Washington and, and knows what concerns us and what, what uh, folks back home want me to fight for. So, so when we talk about how the Democrats could appeal to rural districts in a way perhaps they have not in the past, is it the issues or is it the people? Um, I think it's been a combination of the two. Um, I, I was vice chair of recruitment last election cycle, not this one, where I was uh, helping to recruit candidates running for Congress all over the country. And, and we found in too many areas that the, the people who wanted to run didn't necessarily fit their congressional districts. Maybe they were farther left leaning than a swing district or a purple district or a slightly even red district, where if, if you're a Democrat running in a purple or slightly red district, you better figure out how to navigate that. Um, and, and so this cycle, I think we've got candidates that fit their districts like a glove. Uh, to your point about the policies, uh, look, I've, I've been a Democrat my whole life. I'm proud to be a Democrat. I, I know why I'm a Democrat, because we, we fight for people who just want to get ahead. But when you walk into a room, you don't always have to bring up issues that have a tendency more to, to, to divide than unite. And the order in which you talk about issues and uh, the issues that you focus on heavily, the, the kitchen table issues like you know, addressing the cost of health care and the price of prescription drugs, the fact that we do want to rebuild America, including making sure that high-speed internet broadband is provided for the 23 million rural Americans that don't have it now. And, and frankly, we've got to clean up the corruption out of, that comes out of this building where I'm standing right now. It is out of control. Washington is, is not a place um, where, frankly, I think the other side of the aisle is, is fighting for the people. Um, like we know that we're, we're here to do right. as Democrats. Um, so, so it's just all of that combined. But, but November of, of 2018, I think, is a new day. So, so help me a little bit on one of the issues. I noticed the first issue you mentioned was health care, actually. We put up, mm -hmm. while you were talking, some graphics about your district. And in fact, you have a relatively low percentage of people who are unemployed, who do not have health insurance. Does it remain nonetheless a big issue for your voters back there in Illinois? It's one of the top issues, because I can tell you this, that while we have a low unemployment rate right now, that's taken a long time to get to that rate. Uh, in, in the last six years, our unemployment rate actually has been higher than the rest of the state of Illinois and most of the rest of the country. But our wages, like so many uh, rural communities, the wages of people have not gone up to the same level as their expenses. One of those biggest expenses is health care. And um, I, I can tell you, when I, I do something called Supermarket Saturdays, where I, I walk the aisle of grocery stores, and I, all I do is I say, hi, I'm Sherry Bustos. I represent this area in Congress. What's on your mind? What do you want me to fight for? And um, after they say, can you just get something done, and can you clean up things in Washington, the next thing out of their mouths is, health care is a big concern. My mom has a pre-existing condition. My son was born with cerebral palsy. Um, I've had cancer. I'm very concerned about uh, pre-existing conditions, right. being able to get health insurance, very concerned about being able to afford it. It is a top issue, no doubt about it. Okay, so finally, do you have the leadership you need up there on Capitol Hill? I mean, there, there's an opening, actually, uh, with uh, Representative Crowley, who will not be returning to Congress. Are you interested in moving up to one of the top positions in leadership? 
Well, you know, that'll be the will of our caucus as far as who becomes our speaker, our whip, our leader, our assistant, Democratic leader, caucus chair, all of that is the will of our caucus. Um, I am currently in a leadership position. I'm, I'm one of the three co-chairs of the Policy and Communications Committee, which means I do have a seat at the table. And um, I, probably worth noting is I'm the only Midwesterner sitting around that leadership table. I'm the only person in the Democratic caucus who comes from a district that Donald Trump won sitting around that leadership table. I think that's an important voice uh, because when we win back the majority, a, a good deal of those seats will be in districts like mine that are swing districts, that uh, they're districts that Donald Trump won and that we as Democrats have to say to the American public, please put your faith back in us. Um, and we will prove to you that we will get something done. And we've got to prove that, and we've got to make sure that when we win the majority, we're going to do uh, the hard work of cleaning up corruption, bringing down the cost of the, uh, escalating health care prices, and um, that we rebuild America. And at the same time, we'll create another 16 million jobs and make sure people are ready for those jobs.